charge his life The ghost of Anne Boleyn walks, I declare Now Anne Boleyn was once King Henry's wife Until he had his headsman barber hair I guess he did her wrong long years ago And back she comes each night to tell him so With her head tucked underneath her arm She walks the bloody tower With her head tucked underneath her arm At the midnight hour now when she goes to Henry, she's for telling him what's for. Ah yes, she's gonna show him how the raven split her gore. And just in case his headsman wants to give it an encore, she's got her lid tucked underneath her arm. Now sometimes gay old King Henry throws a spread. For all his pals and gals, a ghostly crew. Now the headsman carves the joint and cuts the bread. When in walks Anne Boleyn to queer the dew. She holds her head up with a wild war hoop. And Henry says, take care, don't you drop it in the soup with a red tuck. Underneath her arm she walks the bloody tower With her head tucked underneath her arm At the mid-night hour Now the sentries think that Annie's carrying in a rugby ball When dinner's done they'll push the chairs and tables to the wall and then they'll choose up sides and kick the queen around the hall With a head tucked underneath her arm With a head tucked underneath her arm She walks the bloody tower With a head tucked underneath her arm At the mid and night hour Along the murky corridors For miles and miles she goes She often catches cold For it is cold there when it blows And it's awfully awkward For the queen to have to blow her nose With her head tucked underneath her arm With her head tucked underneath her arm She walks the bloody tower with her head tucked underneath her arm at the midnight hour. The night stage out of Abilene was wrecked in 65. Eleven souls were on that coach, not one was left alive. Old timers often shiver when they hear the grisly tale. For they say the devil and his horse were seen along that trail. And the phantom stage goes by as the vultures circle high. And its horses scream with fright as it thunders through the night The phantom stage that haunts the canyon trail T'was a gal the name was Sue that the trouble started through In a box of golden nuggets so we're told She had turned a gambler down and that night was leaving town So he planned to get the woman and the gold he waited on the canyon as the light was growing dim. The first shot hit the driver as the coach got to the rim. He dashed the maddened horses, but they hadn't far to go. They slipped and overshot the rim and disappeared below. And the phantom stage goes by as the vultures circle high. 
And its horses scream with fright as it thunders through the night. The phantom stage that haunts the canyon trail. At dawn they searched the ground, but the wreck was never found. And when you pass that spot, you're not alone. For at midnight on the trail, the lost souls tell their tale. And they whisper that the devil took his own. And the phantom stage goes by as the vultures circle high. And its horses scream with fright as it thunders through the night. The phantom stage that haunts the canyon trail. There was an old woman all skin and bones.
and go into my grave. Tim Finnegan lived in Walker Street, a gentle Irishman, mighty oddied, a beautiful brogue, so rich and sweet, to rise in the world he carried a hod. He is seen he'd a sort of a tipple in taste, with a love for the liquor old Tim was born. To help him through his work each day, the drop of the creature every morn. Work at our blood noons, the witch of floor your trotters shake. Isn't it the truth I'm telling you? Lots of fun at Finnegan's wake. One morning Tim was rather full, his head felt heavy which made him shake. He fell from a ladder and he broke his skull, so they carried him home his corpse to wake. They rolled him up in an ice cream sheet and laid him out upon the bed with a candle or two around his feet and a couple of dozen around his head. What the rubble of noons, what your floor, your trotter shake. Isn't it the truth I'm telling you? Lots of fun at Finnegan's wake. His friends assembled at the wake and Mrs. Finnegan called for lunch. First they brought in tea and cake, then pipes, tobacco and whiskey punch. Miss Biddy O'Brien began to cry, such a nice clean corpse did you ever see? Ah, oh, Tim O'Bornin, why did you die? Oh, hold your gab, said Paddy McGee. Then Mrs. O'Connor took up the job. Biddy, she says, you're wrong, I'm sure. But Biddy gave her a belt in the garb and left her sprawling on the floor. Oh, then the war did soon engage, was woman to woman and man to man. Shillelagh law was all the rage, and the row and eruption soon began. Oh, what the rubble of noons, oh, what your floor, your trotters shake. Isn't it the truth I'm telling you, lots of fun at Finnegan's wake. Then Mickey Maloney raised his head, and a noggin of whiskey flew at him. It missed him falling on the bed, the liquor scattered over Tim. Then Tim revived and began to rise And the corpse emerging from the bed said Hand me that liquor, damn your eyes I allowed to drink is all alive I did Oh, a carabble of noons Oh, watch your floor, your trotters shake Isn't it the truth I'm telling you Lots of fun at Finnegan's wake Just 
my ghost, dear love, that's speaking now with me. Your faith and troth you'll never get until you have given to me a gentle smile from your handsome face and a ring to wed with thee. The only thing that I can give is my long white winding sheet for the worms have made of with my handsome face and I have no eyes to weep but I cannot rest in my lowly grave for thinking of my love pray give me back my faith and troth so my soul may rest above Stretched out her lily white hand, she wished to do her best. Here is your troth and faith, my dear. God send your soul to rest. No more the ghost did say to her, but with a grievous moan. Vanished in a cloud of mist And he's left her all alone T'was on a dark and cheerless night To the southern of the king when from a strong nor'wester we had just made our escape Like an infant in its cradle, all hands were fast asleep And peacefully we sailed along the bosom of the deep Peacefully we sailed along the bosom of the deep At length our helmsman gave a shout of terror and of fear as if he had just gazed upon some sudden danger near The sea around was clad in foam And just upon our lee We saw the flying Dutchman come pounding o'er the sea We saw the flying Dutchman come pounding o'er the sea Take in our lofty canvas lads, our watchful master cried to me and my ship's company is some sudden danger bides For every seaman that rounds the cape Although he knows no fear And he knows that there is danger When Van de Deacon's near He knows that there is danger When Van de Deacon's near Here comes the flying Dutchman Like an eagle o'er the sea Pursued along by tempest dire as he makes for Table Bay. Pursued along by tempest dire, the lightning waves his curse, and ere he can cast anchor, the bay, alas, is past. Ere he can cast anchor, the bay, alas, is past. Let's pity poor Vander Deacon, for fearful is his doom. The seas around that stormy cape will be his living tomb. He's doomed to ride the ocean forever and a day. Yet he tries in vain his oath to keep by entering Table Bay. He tries in vain his oath to keep by entering Table Bay. And as we watch the ghostly ship a fading on the tide, our captain smiled at every man aboard our vessel's side. But take heed before you scoff there on the warnings of the deep, for with mighty crash and rending force our vessel struck a reef. With mighty crash and rending force our vessel struck a reef. There 
was an old and a wealthy man. He had a daughter great and grand. She was handsome, neat and tall, and answered to no lover's call. Many a squire came this way, the handsome lady for to see. But at length there was a widow's son. Twas found he was her chosen one. When her old folks came this to know, they sent her far away from home, which broke this young man's tender heart when he and his true love did part. His day had come, his hour had passed, into his grave he went at last, when he'd been no more than twelve months dead, up from the grave he raised his head. The young man rose, put on his clothes, and after her he chose to go. It was a cold and stormy night when he started for his heart's delight. When he came to the place he knew, he said, My love, I've come for you at your mother's wish and your father's heed. I have come for you all in great speed. She dressed herself in rich attire and rode away with a heart's desire. Before they came to her father's gate, he complained and cried, I was hit, did he? Her handkerchief she then took out and with it tied his head about. She kissed his lips and then did say, My dear, you're colder than the clay. Get down, get down, get down, said he, while I go put this steed away. And as she knocked at her father's door, the sight of him she saw no more. When her father saw her, he did say, who came with you this very long way, with the one I love, I love so well, I love him more than tongue can tell. My hair did rise on the old man's head, for he knew her love had long been dead. He wrung his hands and he wept full sore, crying out, My child, your love's no more. They sent for clerks and clergy too, to open the grave and the corpse to view. And though he had been twelve months dead, the handkerchief was round. A captain bold in Halifax who dwelt in country quarters Seduced a maid who hanged herself one Monday in her garters His wicked conscience troubled him, he lost his stomach daily He took to drinking ratafi and thought upon Miss Bailey Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey one night betimes he went to bed, for he had caught a fever. Said he, I am a handsome dog, and I'm a gay deceiver. His candle just at twelve o'clock began to burn quite palely. A ghost stepped up to his bedside and said, Behold, Miss Bailey. Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey. Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey. Avant, Miss Bailey, then he cried, you can't affright me, really. Dear Captain Smith, the ghost replied, you've used me ungenteely. The coroner's quest goes hard with me, because I've acted fraily. And Parson Biggs won't betty me, though I'm a dead Miss Bailey. Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey. Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey. Dear ma'am, said he, since you and I accounts must once for all close, I have a one pound note in my regimental small clothes. It will bribe the sexton for your grave. The ghost then vanished gaily, crying, Burless, you wicked Captain Smith, remember poor Miss Bailey. 
Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey. Oh, Miss Bailey, unfortunate Miss Bailey. Cross the hayfield, the hayfield, the hayfield. Do not cross the hayfield, as sits the blood red sun. For ghosts glide from the hayrick on the hayfield, the hayfield. Ghosts glide from the hayrick in the The hayfield, the hayfield, the hayfield. The reaper crossed the hayfield as set the blood red sun. He passed behind the hayrick on the hayfield, the hayfield. He passed behind the hayrick. In the eagle. The sun went down and the moon rose on the hayfield, the hayfield. The sun went down and the moon rose on the bleak hayfield. A cry rose from the hayrick on the hayfield, the hayfield. A cry rose from the hayrick, and the reaper was seen no more. So do not cross the hayfield, the hayfield, the hayfield. Do not cross the hayfield as sits the blood red sun. There was a Children, she had three. She sent them away to the north country for to learn their grammar. They hadn't been gone no very long, scarcely six months and a day. When death, cold death, came hastening along and stole those babes away, twas just about old Christmas Eve. The night being cold and clear, she looked and she saw her three little babes. I'm running home to her. She said a table both long and wide. On it she put bread and wine. Then come eat, come drink, my three little babes. Come eat, come drink of mine. None of your bread, mother. Neither do we want your wine, for he understands our Savior dear, and to him we must. 
us decline. Green grass grows over our grave mother. Cold clay lies under our feet. And every tear you shed for us. A circle of crimson around him had gathered, and to fondly embrace him, she quickly did run. Why did you call me from the depths of water back to this cold world of strife and of pain? If not for your pleas and my arms to enfold you in the depths of the water. I had in the water Nothing on earth for my troubles to hide But thinking on you, love, I conquered them bravely In hope that someday, love, you would be my bride Then up to the heavens he seemed for to go Leaving this poor girl alone by the shore Leaving this poor girl so abject and lonely In an earthly abode to weep evermore Throwing herself on the ground she cried sadly And these were our heartfelt cries that she gave Oh, since I've lost you my own I will weep here and mourn by the side. 